knowledge can never create experiences knowledge can only validate an experience in the road called life in dealing with the traffic called relationship it's not the question of whose mistake it's a question of whose life happiness is a decision i make before i encounter a situation in spite of everything you have to find a way to be happy and that is why my favorite road sign is u turn either start finding a way by which you'll enjoy the mangoes from the mango tree or go in search of an orange tree a little less with all the happiness is far greater than little more with no happiness birth was not my choice death will not be my choice but in between these two terminals how i live my life is an absolute question of my choice if i have all the money in the world will i continue to do what i am doing and if your answer is yes you are in the right profession I know I always start all my programs by bringing my hands together and bowing down recognizing that spiritual oneness that I in spirit and you in spirit are one and the same but I think to do justice to the topic today let me start this evening by telling all of you happy evening belief is that i will listen to the speech for 2 hours and if i am absolutely convinced i don't need a reason to be happy i will also say happy evening at the end faith is i know by the end of the program i will know i don't need a reason to be happy and in that faith i wish happy evening in the beginning of the program itself so i know all of you believe me but i want you to have faith in me so once again happy evening happy and this is something about we indians which i think we need to change we are more interested in listening to a talk on happiness than being happy have you thought about it okay 
it's good you should be like that only then people like me will have a future <laughs> see if all of you become happy in life then who will listen to me then i don't have a future somehow i'm convinced god is on my side <laughs> because wherever i go i tell people i'll give you an experience of the divine is saying nay give me a talk about god god i don't want so in case a discourse on god is going on and suppose god and comes in front of you you will say nay after the talk i'll see you you go that side <laughs> so i've always seen people want to listen to a talk on love rather than experiencing love knowing god is different from knowing about god knowing love is different from reading a book on love knowledge can never create experiences knowledge can only validate an experience how much ever you have read about when you lose your balance when you lose your breath how drowning will be if you don't know swimming how much ever you have read when you drown only you get the actual experience then you can later say ha ah, yahi book mein likha tha knowledge can never create an experience we have become so knowledge based so knowledge focused so much the craving in all of us is i want to know more i want to know more by data background and yet beyond all that it's the actual experience if somewhere background is enough to take a decision then you should exchange by data and get married why you have to go and see the girl why you have to eat those jalebis why you have to say i want to talk to her for 5 minutes what you will come to know in 5 minutes you are taking your whole life in that 5 minutes <laughs> but finally a decision has to be taken only on faith you look at her you ask her and finally you look up and say be with me and go ahead <laughs> what is life without a risk and it's mutual you don't even know at the point of wedding who is taking a greater risk time will reveal <laughs> but life can't move without faith and yet we like to listen to a talk on happiness happily listen to a talk on happiness first become happy rajan for what we should be happy that's the topic you don't need a reason to be happy <laughs> chumma become happy and then let's listen to a talk on happiness here was this old lady who was 99 years old and because her husband had died she had admitted herself into an old age home by her own decision and somewhere when they said ma'am we are allocating a room for you in the first floor she said fabulous i like that so the receptionist was a little concerned old people they insist on a room in ground floor why she says fabulous for first floor anyhow then the domestic help was called and asked to lead this old lady into a room as they were walking towards the lift that domestic help told that old lady your room is in the northeast corner oh that's amazing i love it your room is 8 by 8 fabulous that's very spacious the domestic help was not able to take it she said ma'am what is exciting about northeast and 8 by 8 the old lady immediately said happiness is a decision i make before i encounter a situation if 12 by 12 will make me happy and 8 by 8 will make me miserable what is controlling my happiness if one mosquito flying through the window and one fly coming through the window will determine whether i'll be happy or miserable then what is controlling my happiness she looked straight into the eyes of the domestic help and asked this question to how many factors in life are we going to hand over the keys of our happiness and then how do we expect to be happy if something out there in the world has to go right and only then we can be happy even god cannot be happy 
things will go wrong things will not be right anything can happen any time seers and saints and yogis and sages and gurus and prophets and messengers and avatars have come and gone and even they could not comprehend this life completely neither a christ was free from crucifixion nor an ahimsa murti in mahatma gandhi was free from the bullets life does not guarantee it's going to be fair and right for all of us but this is the life that we get you like it you don't like it this is the game you have decided to be a football player and you have got into the football field now there is no point in complaining i have to run so much this side and that side and sometimes the ball never comes to me but that's the game you have decided to be the goalie in the game now you can't keep complaining rarely ball comes good for you <laughs> you can't stand there as a goalie and keep complaining what those 10 people alone keep on running why i should stand i will also start running <laughs> no that's a role that you have chosen for the first time the child was sitting with the father in the football stadium and innocently the child told the father now i know why they are all fighting all the 22 of them only one ball is given to them <laughs> but that's how life is your ball game is different you have to pant that's part of the game you have to sweat that's part of the game you will get a few kicks on you that's part of the game you will get an yellow card that you don't deserve that's part of the game you might get a red card you don't deserve that's part of the game he deserves a red card he will not get that's part of the game the referee may be fair may not be fair for all the things that you have done till now and help your team to win today you miss the penalty kick tomorrow you will be a villain in your own country overnight you will be a villain overnight you will be a hero but that's the game and for all that that goalie would have saved four goals the score line reads 3-2 and the names of the three people who scored the goals will be written saying that is why they won a thankless game if the goalie had not saved those four goals the score line would have been 6-3 in the favor of the opponent team but the name of the goalie will not figure anywhere in the history of the records and yet he has to play the biggest role in the winning of a game and yet the game is designed in such a way the guy who scored those three goals his name alone will come who passed it to him his name will not come but you have chose, chosen to play the game of football now there is no point in jumping into the fray called life and then keep complaining about this is not fair that is not fair this is not right this should not be happening your opinion does not count in this life you want to somehow make some field setting adjustments in a game that is going on in england from the television in your house nobody is listening to you nobody is listening to you you are sitting in front of a television watching a mega serial and that fellow has picked up that knife to stab at that lady about 400 episodes ago <laughs> and he is coming and coming and coming and somehow hoping at least today he will use the knife you have been sitting for 400 evenings there and from here in the television auntie says maro usko ma who is listening to you does your opinion count i was here watching the world cup final and the ball is running towards the boundary hundreds of people around me they're shouting pakdo pakdo <laughs> you think suresh raina can hear you 
Does your opinion count? Does it matter? We are a generation where we sit in the theater and a beautiful scene comes. We all clap hands. Hrithik Roshan does not even know you exist. Forget alone you are sitting in a theater and clapping. If in all these mortal things, man-made things itself, your opinion does not count. Do you think in the script of life that he runs, your opinion counts? Hey, you and me are pieces in a chessboard played by a master and we don't know for why he moves this pawn over that pawn. Why one square? Why two squares? Why did he decide to sacrifice the knight for the sake of a pawn? He's playing the game by his own intelligence. We don't comprehend. We are pieces in the game. We can only do one thing. Enjoy the game. Miserably, you are in the game. Happily, you are in the game. Either way, you are in the game. Before we leave the game, let's be happy in life. And that's exactly what the lady said. She said, happiness is a decision I make before I encounter a situation. It's not in the situations lies my happiness. It's a pre-decision I make. As long as you keep waiting. And that is my essential talk. I don't know what else we will learn out of this. All I wish all of you to understand out of this talk is this. Traffic will be there. Pollution will be there. Corruption will be there. Terrorism will be there. People you trust the most will sometimes betray you. The best of your efforts sometimes will not bear the results. Life will sometimes seem more unfair than you can even digest. There will be moments when you will be forced to ask this question, is there any divine justice at all? And immaturity is living my life somehow believing something out there in life should become okay for me to be happy. Something out there in life should change for me to become happy. No. It was not easy for Arjuna. It was not easy for Duryodhana. Life was not all right even for them. Life was not all right even for Krishna. Trusting that fellow Arjuna, he came off to the battlefield with no weapons in his hand, saying that I'll be your charioteer. He didn't even bring a seven o'clock blade in his hand. <laughs> and this fellow comes to the battlefield and says, Krishna, I am not interested in fighting. That you should have told at home, I wouldn't have come. <laughs> you brought me all the way to the battlefield and all those fellows are ready with everything and now you're saying I've changed my mind. For whatever reason, Veda Vyas thinks Bhagavad Gita was delivered. I don't care. I firmly believe one singular reason Bhagavad Gita was delivered was Krishna had to save himself, so he had to convince Arjuna, fight Arjuna, fight. <laughs> There's no other way. Life was not easy even for Krishna. It was not easy for Gandhi. All he did was he loved everybody and for that we crucified him. Prophet had to brave the deserts for everything he did. It's not easy for anybody. You think just because I've come here to deliver a speech on happiness, everything is going right for me in life? It has never gone right for anybody. So first, give away this thought that life needs to be right for me to be happy. Life has to be perfect for me to be happy. Something good should happen for me to be happy. However the game is, I'm going to enjoy the game. It's a decision that has to be made. However life is, I'm going to be happy in life. The whole day I'm miserable, another day still passes and I'm another day closer to the grave. The whole day I'm happy, still another day passes and I'm another day closer to the grave. Either way, I could not control the beginning of my life, birth, there was a providential decision and I will not be able to control the end of my life. It will again be a providential decision. 
birth was not my choice death will not be my choice but in between these two terminals how i live my life is an absolute question of my choice and choose to live the life the way you want to live it's absolutely your choice i was a very serious person even if you pay me i won't smile <laughs> brought up in absolutely economically impoverished conditions it's a very different experience of mumbai for me today i used to live in sector 9 at washi when konkan railways were not there when you didn't have a direct bus you had to take a bus from there to mankod and from there change a bus or you had to take a bus from there to anushakti nagar and from there change another bus electricity had not yet been given in sector 9 8 by 8 room three bachelors office was in fort it used to take 2 hours to travel one way and 2 hours back there are times i have gone to sleep with my shoes on i was all 19 when i came first in search of my future in mumbai and some of brought up in the environment of absolute economic deprivation didn't have enough clothes to wear i had to borrow clothes from my distant relatives that has faded that was outsized for them some of my friends here know that shoe was compulsory for me at work and we couldn't afford shoes as a family i borrowed the shoes of my cousin which was two size bigger to me it used to be stuffed with newspaper in the front and that is how i came to mumbai and somehow as a result i thought that one day when i am rich one day when i have enough and i was not spiritually rooted at that stage not that i was an atheist but when somebody's madhya pradesh is empty there is no focus on uttar pradesh <laughs> had to earn for my parents I had to earn to educate my younger brother future was a question so there was no time to think about god there was no time to think about philosophies of life survival in a typical corporate environment either you get the promotion or your colleague gets the promotion your own friend is your first enemy you eat idli sambar together you drink chai together you talk together but you are hoping you alone will get the promotion you should not get the promotion because there is only one chair there life is unfair because when i studied in fourth standard i got last rank somebody got first rank all of us were promoted when we went to fifth standard all of us still had a chair to sit he again got first rank i again got last rank all of us went to sixth standard we still had a chair to sit but as you go up in life number of chairs keep coming down 40 people one chair a billion people one chair so the entire focus was from where will the future come so it forgotten about there is something called love in life there is something called happiness in life my mind was not even in the direction of all this and somewhere life took a twist and turn i worked in pune i worked in delhi i worked in hyderabad i worked in the gulf i came back started my own software consultancy we still lived in a rented house and one day the house owner called and told me that you take my grandson to the ice cream parlor buy him ice cream and come back felt like a servant but i didn't say no to him otherwise he'll increase the rent so took a four year old boy to the ice cream parlor and somehow i don't know what was the imagination of the child the child laughed loud those days we used to laugh these days you people only send smiley for laughter <laughs> or you maximum type an sms l o l laugh out loud <laughs> but those days we used to really laugh i really didn't think that when i grew up that a time will come where all over the world we will need humor clubs and laughers association where we